This week is especially AMD heavy, so get comfortable. We'll be going over the release of AMD's Radeon Crimson software, the Radeon HD 6000 and 5000 series becoming legacy cards, updated HDMI support on their new cards, and more. I'm David Wolf with Tech Power Up News. Catalyst Control Center is finally dead and buried. It was getting to really show its age. I mean, look at this clunkiness. It's so ugly. Well, it worked and it did the job, but it's a little oddly laid out. The menu arrangement doesn't quite make sense to me. It has a long list of options that aren't exactly quick to navigate on first glance, and a lot of options that do similar things, like desktop color, digital panel display color, display color for VGAs, video color. How about just a button for all of your color options instead of a smattering of avenues to what should be easy to find together? It's like going to your grocery store to get bagels, but only the plain bagels are in the baker section. I just want some blueberry bagels. So I have to go to the produce section where the blueberries are, and there are the blueberry bagels. Nowhere near where you think they would be. It's not even that hard to fix. Look, I'll Photoshop it in. Under Common Display Tasks, System Color Settings. You're welcome. That's enough complaining about Catalyst. AMD has been touting the new successor, Radeon Crimson Software, as being a fairly large improvement, allowing up to 20% faster graphics performance, 33% faster load times in games, and the app brings with it 12 new and enhanced features, with the app itself starting to up to 10 times faster and initializing displays 3 times faster than Catalyst could. It also introduces support for AMD's Liquid VR technology, and something a lot of us will be really grateful for is the included support for DisplayPort to HDMI 2.0 through the use of dongles, like the one Club 3D just announced that supports 4K displays at 60 Hz. Now let's move on to Radeon Software Crimson Edition. I've played with it a little bit to see what cool stuff it holds. A few features might be missing because my system is running a 5850. I know, I'm sorry. Everything is organized by category. Gaming settings, video settings, display settings, affinity, and system information. A lot of the stuff in here is pretty standard fare. You have game profiles, video presets, yada yada. Something you may have noticed though is that a lot of important features seem to be missing. Up here you'll find the additional settings button. Click that and it brings up a menu that looks exactly like Catalyst Control Center. I wanted to say good riddance Catalyst Control Center, but knowing that this little crap is still there I feel like it's going to be with us forever. Mm. I honestly think the organization has taken a step backwards, as things have been compartmentalized even more. At least with Catalyst Control Center, you could look at a list of where everything was. Sure, it was a little wonky, but it was all there. With Radeon settings, you have to cycle through everything if you're not sure where it is, and there's an extra step to getting to advanced settings, which is just leftovers from Catalyst anyways. So, the interface itself is nothing to get excited about. At least, I don't think so. However, the earlier mentioned improved performance and some improved control over your gaming experience is worth downloading Crimson for anyways. And besides, what are you going to do without Crimson? It's all they're making. One more thing, the colors are still separated. Continuing on with more AMD news, the company has decided to relegate its HD 5000 and HD 6000 series GPUs to legacy support. That means the GPUs will no longer be receiving new drivers as AMD believes they've reached peak performance. The last driver update for the cards is the first iteration of Radeon Software Crimson Beta, which I am extremely grateful for, as it allowed me to make that last segment that you just watched. AMD will be focusing driver development on GPUs using its Graphics Core Next architecture, HD 7000 series and beyond. Remember the days of crazy gaming PCs that consumed a ridiculous amount of power? Like the old Skulltrail based PCs with dual Xeons, 16GB of RAM and running 3! Water-cooled 8800 Ultras on two huge power supplies? Well, people still do crazy stuff like that, but nowadays chips are much more efficient and use significantly less wattage. So you can go in reverse and run two... two PCs off the same power supply. The Fantex PH-PWSPR underscore 1P2M with patented isolated dual system technology. What an easy name. Enables users to easily run more than one system off of a single power supply. Each system hooked up to the device can be run individually, so you aren't forced to run both or neither. You can run two systems and have one shut down and not really worry about the other one going off or just start up one. It's all up to you! It's built with anti-noise inrush protection circuitry, which helps stabilize voltage and prevent damage from power surges. And it's also compatible with a wide array of motherboards, MITX, 
UATX, ATX, and EATX. So no need to worry if you want to run two mini ITX PCs on a 1500 watt power supply. No one's going to do that. The device comes with a hook and loop sticker for installation in universal case products as well as a drop and lock system to mount it in a compatible Fantex case. That's all the news I have for this week, but there's more every week, so stick around. Also, make sure to check out our website where we talk about other things other than AMD, like the ASUS GeForce 980 Ti 20th Anniversary Gold Edition. MSI announces EcoSeries socket LGA 1151 motherboards, app claims to blunt Intel's compiler edge on AMD machines, and more. I understand that with just a few minutes of news, you won't get all the info that you need, or you might have a question. Why don't you head on over to our forums and ask us that question? Plenty of nice people to help you out. Did you watch this video and think, hey, I wanted game news? Have I got the channel for you? Check out our sister channel, Next Power Up. They've got awesome game reviews and weekly gaming news. Clicky clicky.